This is the view from my Paris sewing room. It's raining today, which means I'm going to not go shopping. I'm going to stay in and work in the sewing room. And one of the first projects I've decided to work on since my household goods got here is a Lucilla stocking Christmas in Oz. And um, I thought I would tackle doing this by video because sometimes I get emails from people asking me questions and every once in a while they don't give me a way to respond to them. Maybe they're a no reply blogger or uh, they just come in as an anonymous commenter. So that always frustrates me because I want to help and uh, I don't want to be the only one with this addiction to these glittery kits because I'm afraid they might stop making them someday and then I might get caught up and not have anything to do. So I'm going to try and spread my addiction to other people's worlds. It's a good thing. Now after I have ironed out the felt wrinkles, I cut out the backing piece. And there were some other pattern pieces in the white color that I cut off and stored with the kit. But uh, I like to get this out of the way and I put it in a safe place so that a couple months from now when I finish the kit, I know right where it is. Uh, and I cut it out roughly because sometimes the front side of the stocking does not finish exactly to the size of the back pattern size. So I give myself some wiggle room and leave it uncut. The next thing I do is throw all those pattern pieces in a Ziploc bag. This one is a two and a half gallon size, which I find works best because the finished size of the stocking will usually fit in here while I'm working on it and it helps keep all that nasty pet, pet hair from your cats and dogs off them. It also helps keep all your felt pieces together and the felt likes to stick to areas so once you've cut a piece it's real easy to lose it because it sticks to the bottom of your foot when it falls off your lap uh, maybe it, it sticks somewhere else real easily so I find it works best if I try and keep track of everything in one big Ziploc bag while I'm working on that project. The next thing I do is I separate all the floss. It comes all wound up together in the kit when you get it. And I try and separate each color out individually. Sometimes there are colors in the kit that are very similar and a big clue as to which color is which if you're not sure is the instruction sheet which shows the number of strands of each color of floss that's included in the kit. And I like to organize mine on this device. It's a little plastic piece that has holes that are numbered and you can find these in the U.S. in a Michaels craft store, a Hobby Lobby, or a Joann's fabric store and they are always right by the DMC floss section. And like I said, each little hole has a number by it, and then I write what number that color of thread is stored on so I don't get confused, and I speak from experience. Don't make that mistake. Now if you have, if you, if you are gonna do more than a few of these kits, it, it might be worth getting one of these floss organizers. The advantage to this floss organizer is you can store your threaded needles so you're ready to go. Uh, sometimes you just do a few stitches in one color and switch to another thread color so I like having this option. Uh, I made this box from some cardboard in my sewing room, covered it with a batik and I lined it with a felt fabric. The floss likes to stick to the felt fabric and I roll it up to store it. It's not in use. Pardon me, I think I covered the microphone on my camera. And then I have this nifty little cover. But you may not have a need for this much organization. But it's just something uh, that's out there. I got it off of Hirschner's website. They're a crafting website. So it looks like I'm ready to actually start sewing and I'll show you what I'm up to next.